Income Tax 2023-2024, itemized deductions, taxes you paid, tax software example. Get ready and some coffee so we can lessen the sting from the IRS smack with Income Tax Preparation 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six-pack shirts, a must-have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six-pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six-pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six-pack-like shape which is highly attractive. Yeah, may, maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. And, and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our form 1040 example problem using Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have tax software, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the forms, schedules, instructions at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting at our standard starting point, taxpayer Adam Taxman, just trying to avoid a dang taxman. Living in Beverly Hills, 90210, single filer, no dependents, starting out with 100,000 W-2 income. We've got the 13,850 standard deduction gives us the 86,150 taxable income, which we can mirror on our tax worksheet income tax formula. 100,000, 13,850, 86,150. The tax calculated by the software 14,266, which we can see on page two of the form 1040. Let's go back to page one. Our point of focus is on the itemized deductions, which is on line 12, taking the greater of the standard or itemized deduction, the standard deduction being dependent largely on filing status, single filer standard deduction 13,850, double that for married filing joint 27,007, head of household in the middle 20,800, and then if they're over the age or uh, blind, we can see those on 1040 SR page number four, for single filers, we can have one of or two of those conditions increasing the standard deduction. Married filing joint, we can have one to four of those conditions considering two people increasing the standard deduction accordingly. Okay, let's go back to the form 1040 and we're looking at the schedule A. That's going to be the schedule for the itemized deductions, which would only be populated if greater than the standard deduction. And our point of focus now are on the taxes you paid. So the taxes you paid, you will recall a quick recap of the general idea of a federal income tax system. Typically, if we have an income tax system, we want to tax people on the net income, not the gross income, which you can see on the Schedule C, for example, where we have an income statement. We have income minus those expenses that we needed to generate the income, business deductions, in other words, giving us the net income, which is in essence what we're taxed on. That's a natural thing that we would expect from an income tax system. However, most people are W-2 employees and therefore don't have an income statement, but rather the assumption is the W-2 income has already had the expenses incurred by the employer because they're not, shouldn't be something that's gonna be paid by the employee. Therefore, that's where kind of like the W-2 income uh, comes into play for most filers. And then a lot of the stuff on the Schedule A is a deviation from what you would think is just the normal thing 
that you would have on an income tax system. In other words, the government's trying to nudge us in some way, shape, or form, or have been lobbied in some way, shape, or form by particular industries, such as the medical industry, for example, might benefit if we get a deduction for medical expenses and so on and so forth. People will spend more money on medicines, you would think, right? And then, and then with the taxes, you have a similar uh, type. And by the way, I'm not trying to make an argument either way. I'm just saying that these deductions, I, I would, if I was to make an argument, I would simplify the code basically. But the, the, the idea here is going to be, we want to get an idea of what's going on so that we can basically understand and memorize uh, what is happening and be able to explain it. Right? So with regards to the taxes, this is also something that you would think would be kind of personal in nature, unless you were paying the taxes as a business uh, type of expense. Now, the other thing that goes on with the taxes is we get confused in terms of who's the tax for, which taxes are deductible and which are not deductible. Clearly, when we're looking at the form 1040, we're talking about the individual income tax return. So we're doing the federal income taxes, which is the primary tax collection body or way we pay for things for the federal government, which should be basically our defense, the military. That's what they're there for. So keeping us safe, right? That's what they're supposed to be doing over there. So, so, that, so, so that means that we're going to have our tax calculated on page two, which is going to be the federal, uh, the federal income tax. Can I deduct the 14266 federal income tax on my 1040? Well, no, that, would, that wouldn't really make sense because then you would end up with a circle reference because I had to include the deductions in order to calculate the tax. So, so no, you, of course, you can't deduct the federal income tax for the calculation of federal income taxes. But what about other taxes? You might say, hey, I have other taxes like the payroll taxes. In other words, if you're a W-2 employee, you could say, well, I have these taxes related to Social Security and Medicare. Those are basically payroll taxes that are being taken out of my paycheck. Can I deduct those? Well, those typically you can't generally deduct those as well. Uh, they are federal taxes, but they're not income taxes. That's why you, you might think that you might still be able to deduct them. But the general idea is, is no, you can't deduct uh, the Social Security and Medicare generally for federal income tax purposes on, you know, uh, the, the Schedule A. So, so then, then the next thing would be, well, what about the state and local taxes? Now, remember, the state is, is, has its own obligations. They're not in charge of the military. They're in charge of the police and the fire department and whatnot. And they should be paying for those basically separate from federal tax dollars. So people, and so, so then the question is, well, how is the state going to get the money? Well, they could, they could have a mirroring system of the federal income tax system basically having a state income tax system if they wanted to, but they're not required to. They might tax in other ways. They might have like a sales tax and property tax and that kind of stuff and not want to, to pay for their stuff using the same system as the federal government. It might just not work for their community or whatever it might not be the best way that they want to do it. So they should be sovereign to do their own kind of system. That means that the state taxes are going to be different from state to state and locale to locale, which kind of com com puts more complications when we're trying to deduct things on uh, the federal side. So I think what really started with these taxes is they started to say, we, we're going to allow state tax deductions for state income tax. So if you had a state income tax that mirrored the federal government, the system would be much the same, meaning the state income tax is going to be quite complex, like in California, for example, you shoot to overpay so you don't get hit with a penalty. And then you're going to basically get like a refund. And then the Fed is saying that you can possibly deduct the state taxes here that you're paying uh, to to the state. So that's that's going to be the general idea that we might be able to deduct. And it's kind of convenient if you're using tax software because the SAS tax software can calculate both the federal and state and help you to kind of manage the the state taxes which is nice but some states said some states took advantage of that by saying okay we're going to maximize this benefit we're going to do it the way the federal government wants and we're basically going to subsidize our state 
through the deduction of the tax benefits and, and so on. And then the other states said, no, we're going to stick with other taxes, such as the sales tax, which is the other common taxing uh, thing that you could use. And these other states then kind of got cheated for a while, you would think, because because the sales tax wasn't deductible, whereas the state tax was. So then they said, OK, the, the government finally said, we'll allow you to deduct both the state taxes and the sales tax. Uh, but the sales tax is going to be a little bit more complicated because we don't calculate the sales tax when we file the return. You'll note that all of this would be easier if they said we're not going to allow you to deduct any taxes, right, would be the general idea. And they actually did limit the number of taxes you can deduct a few years ago. So now there's a cap on the taxes of 10000 So that's actually fairly low if you're talking about high cost of living areas. You can hit that fairly easily in like California uh, and New York. So that was a big kind of, of thing, uh, a debate over it over that. So that so that's going to be the general idea. So those are the major taxes uh, that we're that we're considering the state taxes and that are the sales tax and the uh, income tax. Then we also have real estate taxes, which is the other big one, which typically is going to be tied to people owning like a house. And so the real estate taxes is the other big one. So let's say let's imagine that, for example, if I go back on over here and I say that we paid state taxes. Uh, on our W-2, and we saw state taxes of $5,000 that we paid out of the W-2. Well, just by doing the data input on the W-2, it will help us to populate and pull into the deductibility of those state taxes on uh, the Schedule A. And this would also be populated on the state tax return if I'm doing both in the same software as a withholding in a similar way as we see on page two of our federal tax return, these would be the, the payments that we made here to calculate the refund on the state side of things. On the federal side of things, we're saying it could be a deduction. Now, if all you had was state taxes, it's not likely that it's gonna push you over the threshold because even with a single filer, the threshold is the 13, 850. And even if I was a high income individual and I paid state taxes, say of $15,000, it's not going to push me over in and of itself, given the fact that we now have a cap of the 10,000. So that 15,000 got capped at the 10,000. Therefore, the state taxes in and of themselves is not going to push me over to be standardizing. What normally pushes people over it's the home, right? The ownership of the home is usually what pushes people over because that become that comes with a mortgage typically, and the interest on the mortgage typically is the thing that's tax tax or, or deductible. So if I jump to that, if I have a mortgage interest at the same time, then I could say, well, what if that was at like uh, like ten thousand for the mortgage interest, just the interest portion on the loan? And so now I've got the 10,000 plus the 10,000 that gets me to 20,000. Now notice the other thing that comes along with the home though, is usually the real estate taxes. If I'm already capped out at the 15,000, the real estate taxes aren't going to give me another benefit. In other words, if I go back in here and I go into my schedule A and I look at my real estate taxes, I'm in taxes and I want to look at the real estate taxes, principal residence, let's say that was like 6,000 or something. Notice if I pull that over, it's still not giving me a benefit. That gives me $21,000 of taxes, but I can only deduct the 10,000 because they put that cap on it. Now, the reason I mentioned this is because a lot of times you will hear when you're thinking about like purchasing a home, that you should purchase a home almost specifically and exclusively so that you can get deductions. Be careful of that because there's a couple things that you need to be aware of. And one of those things is going to be how close are you to being able to itemize? If I go back to the form 1040, then if I'm nowhere near itemizing, I'm nowhere near that 13,000, let's say I only have 3,000 of itemized deductions, and then and then I get to deduct another, you know, 10,000 or so. If I just barely clear that threshold, 
then then still I'm I'm not getting the full tax benefit because because I would have got 13,850 anyways. So let me just show you let me just show you that for an example. So if we go if I was at if I was at uh uh let's go back to the wages and let's remove the state taxes here and just include the real estate taxes. So now I'm at 17205. The schedule A is being populated and now I have the sales taxes being calculated because I didn't include the state tax and I got 6,000 of the real estate. It's all being included now because I haven't hit the cap of 10,000 and then I've got the uh, the 10,000 here for the interest that puts me to 17,205. Uh, so if I go back on over, that's greater than the standard deduction of the of the 13850 but the tax benefit is is still I'm still at 13518 so let's compare that I'm at 13518 that's a difference from what we had before of $748 and basically what happened is I I pay I had a deduction of 10000 Whoops, that's a percent. I had a 10,000, let's say 10,000 plus 6,000 of a deduction. That was the change between the real estate taxes and the, and the interest. So if I was to take this divided by this, it's only like 5% that we got like a benefit from. And you would think that you would have a change that would be something like the tax rate of the highest tax rate like 22 percent and why why is that the case because before i added these things before i added these things i really only had the itemized deductions of like 1205 i was nowhere near the this threshold of the 13850 so so if i got deductions of i've i got deductions of what were my deductions that I got? 17,205, 13,850 of them I already had before because they were part of the standard deduction. So I really only got the difference between the two as the added benefit. So that's so if someone says, hey, look, you're going to get a deduction of 17,205 as an itemized deduction. True, but somewhat de deceiving because even though I get a deduction of 17,205, the uh, the only I would have got a deduction anyways of the 13850 it's only the difference between the two that's given me the added benefit so the the way that you have to budget for this is to actually do the calculation in software so you can really see the actual impact uh, when you make the purchase so it's just something to keep aware of so let's go back on over so once we're over uh the threshold then we can add the state taxes so if you're in like California or something you'll have your state taxes and you'll typically see them if you have a w-2 in the withholdings on the w-2s if they're retired individuals you'll see them possibly in withholdings on the 1099 r and let's say it was only like three thousand then if i go back on over now we've got the three thousand uh plus the six thousand adds up to nine plus the ten thousand mortgage interest to the 19. if i mirror that in my income tax formula we can say, okay, I had uh, income here. I've got then the, let's go to the itemized deductions and the taxes you paid. And let's actually try to make one that's gonna be here standard all the time. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy these and put these down here, state tax. And I'm also, you, you might pull this in from like the withholdings. You might have a withholding sheet, but let's, actually just plug it in there what did i say the state tax was three thousand we paid three thousand for the state taxes real estate taxes we said was six thousand and then we also had the interest which we said was ten thousand and so that adds up to a total of nineteen thousand which is pulling to my tax formula there's our 19 taxable income eighty one thousand so we go back on over here boom and taxable income 81,000 page 2 calculate in the tax 13133 
So we're going to say, all right, 13, 133, there is that one. Okay, now a couple things uh, to note that, that become a little bit confusing is that the tax that we're paying here is on a cash-based system uh, generally. So you might say, well, what would happen if you've got a refund of your taxes for tax year 2023 from 2022? What are you going to do with that? Because what, what happened then is I overpaid 2022 taxes. I recorded it as a deduction and then I got a refund in 2023. Do I need to go back and amend tax year 2022 to adjust the amount that I included in there? No, that would be kind of tedious to do because that's going to happen all the time in an income tax system because it's designed to result in a refund. Well, should I just reduce it from the taxes this year. What I should do is go in here and reduce the tax deduction this year. No, the reason they don't do that most likely is because you might not be itemizing in the following year, right? If you weren't itemizing this year, you wouldn't be able to reduce the tax. What we do instead is possibly include it in income as we saw in a prior presentation. So if in the prior year, someone got a benefit from the deduction last year for taxes, in the current year, when they get the refund, they might have to include it on Schedule 1 refund here and jump to it. And we're going to say duh, 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 include it in uh, income. And then, and then we saw that in a prior presentation. Now, this can be a little bit tricky because uh, the software is going to try to see if you got a benefit from it last time, as we saw when we looked at the income side of things. And so if someone is itemizing, I highly recommend if they're a new client or something like that, or that you, you put the information into the prior software for the prior year and then roll it forward so that any of those roll forwards will populate automatically and it will properly be able to calculate whether or not the refund should be recorded in income. And then you can kind of basically double check it uh, on your end. So that's one thing uh, to note. Also, uh, if we're on a cash-based type of system, if you're, if you're having withholdings made, the withholdings, of course, will be made in the current year, 2023. But if you're making estimated tax payments, then you might make the last estimated tax payment for tax year 2023, but which, which was made uh, in 2024 which year do you include that in? You would include it in 2024 in that case. So for example, if I go back on over here, let's say they were a Schedule C business and, and they're, they're making their, ta their estimated uh, tax payments. Now we're gonna make the state estimated tax payments. Let's imagine we paid another $1,000 and let's say we paid it in 2023, 06, 06, 23. Well, then if I go back on over here, uh, it's, gonna, it's going to then include that here. So now we're at 4,000 up top, it was at 3,000. But if I said that I made this estimated tax payment for tax year 2023 by one January 6, 2024, then although I applied it to 2023, it's not included in this number and will be included possibly as a deduction next year if you're itemizing next year. So the, the cutoff gets a little bit confusing sometimes uh, because it's applied, you get the deduction possibly when you pay the tax, uh, not in accordance to what year the tax has been applied to. Okay, now if you're in a state that doesn't have taxes for the, the state taxes on a, uh, income tax system, then you're going to have the sales tax. Now, if I don't put anything in, it's going to automatically calculate the sales tax because the assumption is that you're, you, you, you're being taxed on a sales tax if you didn't include a income tax. And so then the software, this is what's great about software. The software can help to calculate what that tax should be. So it has, says here, state and local income taxes or general sales taxes, you may include either tax taxes or general sales taxes on line 5A, but not both. 
So you have to choose, am I going to do sales tax or income tax? Most states primarily use a sales tax or income tax as their primary revenue generation. Some states have both, right? Because some states love to tax. So if you elect to include general sales taxes instead of income taxes, you know, check the box. And then you have your worksheet here, which is going through the calculation. And this will help us out to apply the, the worksheet to calculate the sales tax. But as we saw in the prior presentation, you can have a whole lot of confusing scenarios with the sales tax. And if you purchased a large item, such as like a boat or a car or something, then it's likely that your sales tax calculation for actual tax might be greater than the the calculation here, which is you would think kind of like the average based in part by location. So in that case, you might want to do your actual sales tax rather than basically uh, using the tables. So you could jump in and say uh, the the actual expense method of the sales tax. And then you can go through here and basically enter the actual sales tax. Now, I'm not going to go into that in detail because that will be dependent in part on the state that you are in. And as a tax preparer, the question is going to be, do I want to focus on my locality, which possibly is more likely to have a sales tax calculation or an income tax calculation? Do I want to take on more complex returns that might have multiple state uh, kind of situations or possibly even like a foreign income? So, so, but that's the general gist of that one. And then we saw the property taxes, which we can call like the real estate taxes are the other one, the big one that might be included in here. And then we have other taxes. And the main one that goes down here most of the time is going to be for like the automobile, for example, because everyone has uh, the registration on the automobile. Now, the general idea here you paid a yearly fee for registration of your car. Part of the fee was based on the car's value and part was based on weight. You can deduct only the part of the fee that was based on the car's value uh, is the general idea because that's going to be what they consider to be, in essence, the state tax. So the general idea there would be that, let's put $100 in here or so. You're going to say, okay, is someone itemizing? If they are itemizing, then we're going to have to have some kind of tax calculated up here, which will either be the state tax or the sales tax. And then if they own a home, which they probably do because the mortgage interest on the home is probably the thing that made them itemize, then they're probably going to have real estate taxes, which we want to make sure that we pick up because the real estate taxes might not be reported on any form. It might be, it might be on like the 1098 if they're paying it through the mortgage company, but if they're paying it on their own, then the, the state or locale is not gonna give you like a 1098 or something for it. You just have to ask and make sure that you get it because you know that they must have something there because they paid mortgage interest, which means they have a home, which means they're gonna be paying property taxes. And then they also are almost surely going to have a car. So we might as well pick up the, the registration fees, which once again, you're not going to get a documentation like a 1099 or 1098 for, but it's something that you can ask for and basically fairly easily pick up, even though it's usually fairly do small in dollar amount and possibly somewhat immaterial or insignificant, at least in relation to the mortgage interest and the property tax, uh, for example. Now, the other thing we got to watch out for is that sometimes you'll be able to deduct these taxes somewhere else, which is actually more legitimate from a fed, from an income tax perspective. And then, then you have to split it between here and there. So for example, if I had a schedule C business, then, and, and I purchased things for, for the schedule C, let's say I purchased supplies or for the Schedule C, uh, or even equipment that I have to depreciate or something, I can't take the sales tax if I'm calculating sales tax on the, even the equipment because I'm going to be deducting that in the form of depreciation. That'll be part of the cost. Therefore, it'll be a business expense. Uh, uh, the, so I also could have like property taxes on the home, for example, and I might be using my home as an office. 
So if I'm using my home as an office, then I might be able to deduct part of the taxes as like a home office uh, expense, which we might talk more about when we get to the Schedule C business. But if I'm deducting things with a home office expense, part of the expense is the taxes for the real estate for the home uh, office, right? And so I would get to deduct that possibly on the Schedule C. If that happens, I can't also deduct it on the Schedule A, at least not the entire thing, because then I would be double dipping. So I'm gonna have to do some kind of fraction thing, you would think, such as what's the square footage of the office? Let me take the percentage of the square footage of the office compared to the total square footage ratio, allocate that to the Schedule C, and then the rest possibly still being deductible on uh, the Schedule A. So we end up with those, uh, that kind of issue as well, which often comes up in part because the IRS keeps on deviating from a natural income tax system, deductions only being allowed if they were necessary to help generate revenue and going to personal things like where you decide to live, taxes, property taxes, do you, are you gonna buy a home and lobbyists that are, that are trying to get the mortgage interest to deduction, I would think are the real estate industry and so on, nudging us with charitable deductions, these things, end up complicating the code greatly more than you would really think but i digress that's the general idea uh with the taxes